Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Mary DeVera. She's a research scientist at Arthritis Research Canada, and she's a pharmacoepidemiologist. Who the, the, she's an epidemiologist who studies the uses and effects of drugs in well-defined populations. Her research interests include medication adherence and arthritis medication use during pregnancy. Today, Dr. DeVera will shed light on just how safe it is to take arthritis medications while pregnant. Welcome, Mary. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, I wanna thank, again, Arthritis Research Canada and the Patient Advisory Board for host hosting eROAR. Um, I've actually been with Arthritis Research Canada since um, 2004, so I started as a trainee I liked it so much, uh, I kept studying there, and then I had a great honor of um, joining as a faculty and a scientist in 2013. Um, John mentioned this is the 12th EROAR. I think I've only missed two, but this is my first time as a presenter. So I'm really excited and just a little bit nervous. So um, Saturday mornings are precious, and you've all come here, and for those of you joining us online, here to learn about arthritis. So, um, and the research that we do, and I couldn't help but be inspired by this quote about how learning never exhausts the mind. Now, I love research, I love what I do, and I think my colleagues at Arthritis Research Canada will say the same thing because we get to learn every day. And it's really special for us because, as John mentioned, we go to conferences, we write research articles for journals, but this is really special because we do our research um, so that it could help people living with arthritis. So when we get the chance to share it directly with people, it's really special. But because it is Saturday and this is not a stuffy conference and scientists are fun, I thought we'd do something a little different. Um, so we're going to have the premiere, and because I think we are webca webcast worldwide, the worldwide premiere of arthritis. So I want, you, I want you all to be part of the presentation. So I wanted to do a little bit of um, audience participation. So um, if everybody has a cell phone, um, it's very easy. I hope you can all. Or if we, uh, there's also um, in your registration packages, there's these. If you're wondering what the colored papers are, this is what these are for. We were doing arts and crafts last week to prepare these. So, but it would be cool if we do it the high tech way, but we can also do it the no tech way. So, for the high tech way, there's two options. So, if you want to do it the text way, um, this is my attempt at making a phone. So, on the number, you will t um, enter 37607, and then in the body of the text, farm size, so P-H-A-R-M-S-C-I. So I don't know if anybody, everybody would like to do that. Or if you um, want to use the website, you can also enter um, polev.com slash farm size, and that will lead you to the arthritis. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. You should receive a welcome message once you've activated the text. So it should say, Hello, I'm, I'm Jean-Paul Marchand, and that's the person who owns the account who's lending us borrow it for this morning. So um, as, as, I guess if you guys can put up your phones, if you have entered. Okay, how's my time, Eileen? I'm okay? Okay, okay, so I think we have. Okay, so it's, we're gonna start with our testing question. Can you see it? Scientists are fun people, so a is false, text A for true, text B for false. So I'll give you guys some time. And I think people online can also do this. Dr. Harrison is not allowed to answer this question because I know his answer. <laughs> okay, so it works. Okay, now that I know that we can do this, now we're gonna go to the real test. So first question, oh, I guess we don't need the, in case we had technical difficulty, so. So first question, arthritis is more common among women than among men. A for truth or text B for false? Yes, okay. So I guess I don't need my next slide either. So 
The answer is true. There is a big gender gap in arthritis. Um, this disease strikes more women than men. And just um, two striking examples. So rheumatoid arthritis is three times more common in women than in men. And then lupus, it's nine times more common in women than among men. And if my colleague, Dr. Antonio Avina were here, he would say it in a Spanish accent that it's also a disease of beautiful women. <laughs> um, because of that, because arthritis strikes more women than men, there's a problem because it actually strikes during childbearing years. So it affects moms and babies too. So everybody get your cell phones out. We have a next question. So our next question, we're getting a little bit more challenging because we've all warmed up. Um, arthritis affects pregnancies by, so text A, moms with arthritis are more likely to have C-section deliveries. B, moms with arthritis are more likely to deliver preterm. C, babies born to moms with arthritis are more likely to have low birth weight. And D, all of the above. Wow, everybody is all awake. I'm really into it on Saturday morning. Okay, so that answer is D, all of the above. Having arthritis is bad for pregnancy. So the disease itself leads to these problems. So at least problems for the mom, and it leads for problems for the baby. So Dr. Harrison was talking about making difficult decisions. So women with arthritis who are planning to become pregnant, who are pregnant, have very difficult decisions to make because it's not as simple as not taking your medications because the disease needs to be under control in order to have a safe and successful pregnancy. But they have to weigh that with the risks of um, how those arthritis medications might affect the baby and the mom. So it's a very difficult decision. And that's what I sought to study. So um, in particular, I was interested in looking at biologics. So Dr. Harrison also talked about what biologics are. Um, we call them new. They're new wish because there's more um, medications coming online for arthritis. So they were um, introduced in the early 2000s. And um, they're different than traditional arthritis medications because um, Whereas traditional arthritis medications are chemicals or made with chemicals, these are made with um, living organisms, making them very expensive to produce, but they're also very effective because they target specific parts of the immune system and they really revolutionize arthritis treatment. The problem is that they were introduced in the 2000s. When I started my um, position in 2013, there was actually very limited information about how safe they are for um, pregnancies. So um, over the past five years, I've been conducting this research at Arthritis Research Canada. And this is a picture of our um, beautiful um, building um, in Richmond. And then really important, so John mentioned that there are trainees in the audience. And um, when I was a trainee coming to EROR, um, Presenters would always um, say that there's trainees in the audience, the future of arthritis research is bright. I'd like to say that it's even brighter because we are training um, really amazing future scientists who will continue a lot of this great arthritis research work. So a lot of the work that I'm presenting was actually done by now Dr. Nicole Tao, who did this research as part of her PhD. She's now moved on to do her postdoctoral fellowship at Harvard University. So ARC really does produce great scientists. So what did I do? So I took health data for all women in BC who delivered a baby between 2002 and 2012, and I found about 6,000 women with arthritis, um, and they had over 8,000 pregnancies. So I found women who took biologics during pregnancy, and then I um, compared them with women who didn't take biologics during pregnancy. So I won't bore you with the statistics and the math, but um, really important here is it had to be an apple to apple comparison. So I wanted to make sure that I was comparing women with the same type of arthritis, the same um, you know, this disease activity, the same age, because I really wanted to isolate the effect of the drug. So I used some fancy statistical techniques. Um, if you are all curious, I'm happy to share the paper, but I just wanted to assure you that 
it had to be an apple to apple comparison. So what did I find? So first, we found that in terms of preterm deliveries, women with arthritis who took biologics um, did, not have, did, did not deliver their babies earlier as compared to women with arthritis who did not take biologics. So, um, and I did report proportions of about 18% and 16%. So um, there's no risk of preterm deliveries. We also looked at the babies. So we looked at the babies, um, how heavy they were. And um, so we found that, again, the women who took biologics during pregnancies, their babies weren't small for gestational age when we compared them to women who didn't take biologics. And then because this is hot coming out of the oven, so these two I've published, you are the first people to now know that we also looked at congenital, uh, congenital, ah, congenital anomalies, which is, again, another important outcome that we worry about when we think about pregnancy, and we found that the proportions are the same. So there was no risk signal for women taking biologics. So overall, what this points to is that there's a encouraging safety um, information um, for women who may be making decisions about taking um, biologics during pregnancy or not. So I thought I would close with our last question. Um, arthritis is just a disease of older persons. Text true for A, B for false. You guys all got it right. And one of the important things that um, is important to me about my research is also raising awareness about arthritis because it is such a misunderstood disease. So um, what I hope that you will take home are that you know, arthritis is more common among women than men. And because of that, it's like, a problem with pregnancy because it strikes during childbearing years. And then most important, it's not just a disease of older persons. Really important to me and why I do my research, it also affects moms and babies. So thank you. Hi. Does this, uh, your statistics, were those just rheumatoid arthritis or rheumatoid and lupus? Or? We, we looked at all indications for biologics, so it also included... Um, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, um, rheumatoid arthritis, and, and we also um, included uh, other indications or other uses of biologics, so we actually also looked at inflammatory bowel disease. Wonderful. Uh -huh. That's really question from online, I don't know if you can answer, but the question was, if you use biologics for RA, how does that interact with other autoimmune diseases? And did you find any cross, ref, you know, cross, crossing over with your study? Um, well, we, I, I guess as I was explaining, we, we wanted to make sure that the, the pregnancies were comparable. So we were comparing a woman with RA taking biologics with a woman with RA taking biologics. Is that the question? I guess they can follow up with me on Twitter. DM me. Did you separate out um, the different types of biologics? Like, did you look at the differences between, say, Simsia or Embril or, um, or whatever? We tried to, but actually because they were still slowly coming onto market. We didn't really have that many, so we looked at them all together. But a lot of the biologists were actually the anti-TNFs. Um, but we're hoping to replicate um, the study. So the great thing about medications and pregnancy is there's no such thing as you know, not a new study because we really need to keep the data updated. So I hope to repeat this, especially now that you know, biologics have had more time to be used.